Welcome to our lecture online. There doesn't appear to be a shortage of different methods to solve systems of linear equations. Here we are looking at method number six using what we call the inverse matrix method. Well, what is an inverse matrix? Well, it turns out that we can take this system of linear equations, which is kind of a simple system. They have small numbers, and that's nice as small numbers because it's easy to make it work. But notice, if we take the coefficients of the x, y, and z variables and place them over here into a matrix format, and then we multiply this matrix times the x, y, z matrix, which of course represents the three variables x, y, z, and we set it equal to the constants, this format, called the matrix format, is exactly the same as what we have written here, because the way that works is this. You multiply this element times x, so 2 times x, plus 1 times y, minus 1 times z, equals 5. And that's what our top equation says. So it's just a different form of writing these very same equations. Then we can write 1 times x, plus 1 times y, minus 1 times z, is equal to 4. And minus 1 times x, minus 2 times y, 3 times z, equals minus 8. So what we do is we go across from left to right here, and we go down here. That's how you multiply these matrices. 2 times x plus 1 times y minus 1 times z equals 5. 1 times x plus 1 times y minus 1 times z equals 4. And minus x minus 2y plus 3z equals negative 8. And so you can see that it's essentially the same thing, just in a different format. So this is what we call the A matrix, this is what we call the variable matrix, and this is what we call the B matrix. So the A matrix multiplied times the variable matrix equals the B matrix. And that's again a different way of writing the very same thing. Now it turns out to find the values for x, y, and z, we can rearrange this. We can move the A to the other side, the equal sign, but then turn it into what we call the inverse of matrix A. So the variables x, y, and z can be, can be defined by taking the inverse of the matrix A and multiplying it times the B matrix. Of course, the B matrix is still this. So we can simply say that x, y, and z can be found by taking the inverse matrix and multiplying it times the B matrix. Of course, we'll show you later how to do that multiplication. But the real trick is, how do we find the inverse of the matrix A? Here's the matrix A. How do we find the inverse? Well, it turns out, we do it the same way like we do the reduced uh, row echelon form. But instead of just having the B matrix here in our augmented matrix, so again, here are the coefficients of x, y, and z in our three equations, but here we put what we call the identity matrix. Once across the diagonal, zeros everywhere else, that's assumed to be the identity matrix, and then we manipulate the left side until the left side looks like this, and on the right side will be the inverse matrix. So in, in essence, we end up with something that looks like this, where here we have ones across the diagonal, zeros everywhere else, and this becomes the inverse of the A matrix. So whatever these numbers are, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, this is simply constants, that forms the inverse matrix of A that goes over here, we multiply times B, and we get the values for X, Y, and Z. And that's how it's done. So again, we're going to turn, take this and turn it from this form into this form. As we're manipulating these, these numbers, of course, are going to change. And this is going to turn into something like that, which represents the inverse matrix. And then we can easily solve for the variables x, y, and z in our system of linear equations. So on the next video, we're going to show you how to go from here to there so we can solve for the inverse matrix of A. And then we can show you how to find the values for x, y, and z in this particular system of linear equations. And that is how it's done. Again, <laughs> the manipulation of a lot of numbers. Yeah, but those, are, those are nicer numbers. I picked a nice one. Yeah. <laughs>